James had not seen the fat controller for several days. He was left alone for being naughty and was not even allowed out to push coaches and trucks in the yard. Oh dear, he thought, I shall have to stay in the shed for always and no one will see my red coat again. All because I went so fast I made a hole in one of my coaches that had to be mended with, of all things, a passenger's boot lace. At last the fat controller arrived. I see you are sorry, James, he said. I hope now that you will be a better engine. You have given me a lot of trouble. People are laughing at my railway and I don't like that at all. I'm very sorry, sir, said James. I will try hard to behave. That's a good engine, said the fat controller. I want you to pull some trucks for me. James was delighted and puffed away. Here are your trucks, James, said Thomas. Have you got some bootlaces ready? And he ran off, laughing. Oh, 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 said the trucks. We want a proper engine, not a red monster. James took no notice and started as soon as the guard was ready. Come along, come along, he puffed. We won't, we won't, screamed the trucks. But James didn't care, and he pulled the screeching trucks sternly out of the station. Trucks tried hard to make him give up, but he still kept on. Sometimes their brakes would slip on, and sometimes their axles would run hot, and each time the trouble had to be put right. And each time James would start again, determined not to let them beat him. Give up, give up, you can't pull us, you can't, you can't call the trucks. I can and I will, I can and I will, puffed James. And slowly but surely, he pulled them along the line. At last they saw Gordon's Hill. Look out for trouble, James, warned his driver. We'll go fast and get them up before they know it. Don't let them stop you. So James went faster and soon they were halfway up. I'm doing it, I'm doing it, he panted. Will the top never come? Then, with a sudden jerk, it all came easier. I've done it, I've done it, he puffed. Hooray, it's easy now. But his driver shut off steam. They've done it again. We've left our tail behind. Look. The last trucks were running backwards down the hill. The coupling had snapped. But the guard stopped the trucks and got out to warn approaching engines. That's why it was easy, said James, as he backed the other trucks carefully down. What silly things trucks are. There might have been an accident. Shall I help you, James? called Edward. Uh, no, thank you, answered James. I'll pull them myself. Good. Don't let them beat you. You're doing well, whistled Edward, as James slowly struggled up the hill. I can do it, I can do it, he puffed. He pulled and puffed as hard as he could. I've done it, I've done it, he panted. They reached their station safely and James was resting in the yard when Edward pulled up. Peep, peep, he whistled. Then James saw the fat controller. Oh dear, what will he say, he asked himself. But the fat controller was smiling. I was in Edward's train and I saw everything, he said. You've made the most troublesome trucks on the line behave. After that, you deserve to keep your red coat.
One night, Henry and Gordon were alone with James. Although the fat controller was beginning to think well of him, whenever a chance came, the other engines would talk of nothing but bootlaces. Remember the time one had to be used to get you out of trouble, James, they would tease. James tried to get his own back, talking about engines who got shut up in tunnels and stuck on hills, but they wouldn't listen. You talk too much, little James, said Gordon. A fine, strong engine like me has something to talk about. I'm the only engine who can pull the express. When I'm not there, they need two engines. Think of that. I've pulled expresses for years and have never once lost my way. I seem to know the right line by instinct. Every wise engine knows, of course, that the signalman works the points to make engines run on the right lines. But Gordon was so proud he had forgotten. Wake up, James, said Gordon next morning. It's nearly time for the express. What are you doing? Odd jobs? Oh, well, we all have to begin somewhere, don't we? Run along now and get my coaches. Don't be late. James went to get Gordon's coaches. They were all shining with lovely new paint. He was careful not to bump them, and they followed him smoothly into the station, singing happily, we're going away, we're going away. I wish I was going with you, said James. I should love to pull the express and go flying along the line. Gordon, with much noise and blowing of steam, got ready to back onto the train. The fat controller was on the train with other important people. And as soon as they heard the guard's whistle, Gordon started. Look at me now, look at me now, he puffed, and the coaches glided after him. Poop, 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 poop. Goodbye, little James, see you tomorrow. James watched the train disappear and then went back to work. He pushed some trucks into their proper sidings and went to fetch the coaches for another train. James had just brought the coaches to the platform when he heard a mournful noise. There was Gordon trying to sidle into the station without being noticed. Hello, Gordon. Is it tomorrow? asked James. Gordon didn't answer. He just let off steam feebly. Did you lose your way, Gordon? said James. No, it was lost for me. I was switched off the main line onto the loop. I had to go all round and back again. Perhaps it was instinct, said James. Meanwhile, all the passengers hurried to the booking office. We want our money back, they shouted. But the fat controller climbed on a trolley and blew the guard's whistle so loudly that they all stopped to look at him. Then he promised them a new train at once. Gordon can't do it, he said. Will you pull it for us, James? Yes, sir, I'll try. So James was coupled on and everyone got in. Do your best, James, said the fat controller. Come along, come along, Puff James. You're pulling as well, you're pulling as well, sang the coaches. Bridges and stations flashed by, the passengers cheered, and they soon reached the station. Everyone said thank you to James, and the fat controller was very impressed. Well done, he said. Would you like to pull the express sometimes? Yes, please, answered James. <coughs> Next day, when James came by, Gordon was pushing trucks. I like some quiet work for a change, he said. I'm teaching these trucks manners. You did well with those coaches, I hear. Good, we'll show them. And he gave his trucks a bump. James and Gordon are now good friends. James sometimes takes the express to give Gordon a rest. Gordon never talks about bootlaces, and they are both quite agreed on the subject of trucks.
Thomas the tank engine is very proud of his branch line. He thinks it's the most important part of the whole railway. His two coaches, Annie and Clarabel, agree with him. Annie can only take passengers, but Clarabel can take passengers, luggage and the guard. They are both old and need new paint, but Thomas loves them very much. As they run backwards and forwards along the line, they sing songs to each other. When Thomas starts from a station, he sings, Oh, come along, we're rather late. Oh, come along, we're rather late. And the coaches sing, We're coming along, we're coming along. They don't mind what Thomas says to them, because they know he is trying to please the fat controller. And they know, too, that if Thomas is cross, he's not cross with them. One day, they had to wait for Henry's train, which made Thomas very cross. How can I run my line properly if Henry is always late? He doesn't realize that the fat controller depends on me. Thomas whistled impatiently. He wanted to leave, but he had to wait for Henry's passengers. At last, Henry came. Where have you been, lazy bones? asked Thomas. Oh dear, my system is out of order. No one understands my case. You don't know what I suffer, moaned Henry. Rubbish, said Thomas. You're too fat, you need exercise. The guard blew his whistle and Thomas started so quickly that he left him behind. The guard waved his red flag to stop Thomas, but he was well on his way steaming out of the station. Come along, come along, puffed Thomas. But Clarabel didn't want to come. I've lost my nice guard, I've lost my nice guard, she sobbed. Annie tried to tell Thomas what had happened. We haven't a guard, we haven't a guard. But he was hurrying and wouldn't listen. Annie and Clarabel tried to put on their brakes, but they couldn't without the guard. Where is our guard? Where is our guard? They cried. But Thomas didn't stop till they came to a signal. Bother that signal, said Thomas. What's the matter? I don't know, said his driver. The guard will tell us in a minute. They waited and waited, but the guard didn't come. Peep, 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 peep. Where is the guard, whistled Thomas. We've left him behind, sobbed Annie and Clarabel together. Everyone looked, and there was the guard running as fast as he could along the line, with his flags in one hand and his whistle in the other. He was very hot, so he had a drink, then told them all about it. I'm very sorry, Mr. Guard, said Thomas. It wasn't your fault, Thomas, he replied. Look, the signal is down. We can go. Let's make up for lost time. Annie and Clarabel were so pleased to have their guard again that they sang, as fast as you like, as fast as you like, to Thomas all the way. They reached the end of the line quicker than ever before.
When Thomas puffed along his branch line, he always looked forward to something special. The sight of the river. As he rumbled over the bridge, he would see people fishing. Thomas often wanted to stay and watch, but his driver said, no. What would the fat controller say if we were late? Every time he met another engine, he would say, I want to fish. But they all had the same answer. Engines don't go fishing. Silly stick in the muds, thought Thomas. One day, he stopped as usual to take in water at the station by the river. Out of order? Bother, said Thomas. I'm thirsty. Never mind, said his driver. We'll get some water from the river. They found a bucket and some rope and went to the bridge. Then the driver let the bucket down to the water. The bucket was old and had five holes. So they had to fill it, pull it up and empty it into Thomas's tank as quickly as they could, several times over. Finished at last. That's good, that's good, puffed Thomas, and Annie and Clarabel ran happily behind. Suddenly, Thomas began to feel a pain in his boiler. Steam began to hiss from his safety valve in an alarming way. There's too much steam, said his driver. Oh dear, groaned Thomas, I'm going to burst, I'm going to burst. They damped down his fire and struggled on. I've got such a pain, I've got such a pain, Thomas hissed. They stopped just outside the last station, uncoupled Annie and Clarabel, and ran Thomas, who was still hissing fit to burst, on a siding right out of the way. Then while the guard telephoned for an engine inspector, the driver found notices in large letters, which he hung on Thomas in front and behind. Danger, keep away. Soon the inspector and the fat controller arrived. Cheer up, Thomas, they said, we'll soon put you right. The driver told them what had happened. So the feed pipe is blocked, said the inspector. I'll just look in the tanks. He climbed up and peered in. Then he came down. Excuse me, sir, please look in the tank and tell me what you see. Certainly, Inspector, replied the fat controller. He clambered up, looked in, and nearly fell off in surprise. Inspector, he whispered, can you see fish? Gracious goodness me, how did the fish get there, driver? We must have fished them from the river with our bucket, replied Thomas's driver. Well, Thomas, so you and your driver have been fishing, but fish don't suit you. We must get them out. They all took turns at fishing in Thomas's tank while the fat controller looked on and told them how to do it. When they had caught all the fish, they had a lovely picnic supper of fish and chips. Mm. That was good, said the fat controller. But fish don't suit you, Thomas, so you mustn't do it again. No, sir, I won't, said Thomas sadly. Engines don't go fishing. It's too uncomfortable.
autumn had come to the island of Sodor, the fields were changing from yellow stubble to brown earth, and a tractor was hard at work as Thomas puffed along. Later, Thomas saw the tractor close by. Hello, said the tractor, I am Terence, I am plowing. I am Thomas, I am pulling a train. What ugly wheels you've got. They're not ugly, they're caterpillars, said Terence. I can go anywhere, I don't need rails. I don't want to go anywhere, said Thomas. I like my rails, thank you. Winter came with dark clouds full of snow. I don't like it, said Thomas's driver. A heavy fall is coming. I hope it doesn't stop us. Ha, huh, said Thomas, soft stuff, nothing to it. And he puffed on, feeling cold but confident. They finished their journey safely, but by now the country was covered. You'll need your snowplow for the next journey, Thomas, said his driver. Ha, huh, snow is silly soft stuff. It won't stop me. The snowplow was heavy and uncomfortable and made Thomas cross. He shook it and he banged it, and when they got back, it was so damaged that the driver had to take it off. You're a very naughty engine, he said to Thomas. Next morning, Thomas's driver and fireman came early and worked hard to mend the snowplow, but they couldn't make it fit. Thomas was pleased. I shan't have to wear it, I shan't have to wear it, he puffed to Annie and Clarabel. But they were rather worried. I hope it's all right, I hope it's all right, they whispered to each other. The driver was worried too. It's not bad here, he said to the fireman, but it's sure to be deep in the valley. Silly soft stuff, puffed Thomas. I didn't need that stupid old thing yesterday, and I shan't today. Snow can't stop me. He rushed into a tunnel thinking how clever he was, but there was trouble ahead. Cinders and ashes, said Thomas. I am stuck. And he was. Back, Thomas. Back, said his driver. Thomas tried, but his wheels spun and he couldn't move. The guard went back for help while everyone else tried to dig the snow away. But as fast as they dug, more snow slipped down until Thomas was nearly buried. Oh, my wheels and coupling rods! I shall have to stop here till I'm frozen. What a silly engine I am! And Thomas began to cry. At last, a bus came to rescue the passengers. And then, who should come to Thomas's rescue but Terence? Snow never worries him. He pulled the empty coaches away, then came back for Thomas. Thomas's wheels were clear, but still spun when he tried to move. Terence tugged and slipped and slipped and tugged, and at last dragged Thomas clear of the snow, ready for the journey home. Thank you, Terence. Your caterpillars are splendid, said Thomas. I hope you'll be sensible now, Thomas, said his driver. I'll try, said Thomas, and he puffed humbly away.
Thomas was waiting at a junction when a bus arrived. Hello, said Thomas. Who are you? I'm Bertie. Who are you? I'm Thomas. I run this branch line. So you're Thomas, eh? I remember now. You got stuck in the snow. I took your passengers and Terence the tractor pulled you out. I've come to help you with your passengers today. Help me, said Thomas. I can go faster than you. You can't, said Bertie. I can, huffed Thomas. I'll race you, said Bertie. The drivers agreed to the race going ahead. The station master said, Are you ready? Go! Thomas never could go fast at first, and Bertie drew in front. Why don't you go fast? Why don't you go fast? called Annie and Clarabel. Wait and see, wait and see, hissed Thomas. He's a long way ahead, they wailed. But Thomas didn't mind. He'd remembered the level crossing. There was Bertie fuming at the gates while they sailed gaily through. Goodbye, Bertie, called Thomas. After that, the road left the railway, so they couldn't see Bertie. Then they had to stop at the station to let off passengers. Peep, peep, peep! Quickly, please, called Thomas. And off they went again. Come along, come along, sang Thomas. We're coming along, we're coming along, sang Annie and Clarabel. Hurry, 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 panted Thomas. Then he looked ahead. There was Bertie tooting triumphantly on his horn. Oh, dearie me, oh, dearie me, groaned Thomas. Steady, Thomas, said his driver. We'll beat Bertie yet. We'll beat Bertie yet. We'll beat Bertie yet, echoed Annie and Clarabel. We'll do it. We'll do it, panted Thomas. Oh, bother. There's a station. Then he heard Bertie. Goodbye, Thomas. You must be tired. Sorry, I can't stop. We buses have to work, you know. Goodbye. Oh, dear, thought Thomas. We've lost. But he felt better after a drink. The signal dropped. Hurrah, we're off! Hurrah, we're off! puffed Thomas. As they crossed the bridge, they heard an impatient honk, honk. There was Bertie waiting at the traffic lights. He started with a roar and chased on after Thomas again. Now Thomas reached his full speed. Bertie tried hard, but Thomas was too fast. Whistling triumphantly, he plunged into the tunnel, leaving Bertie toiling far behind. I've done it! I've done it! panted Thomas. We've done it, hooray! We've done it, hooray! chanted Annie and Clarabel as they whooshed into the last station. Everyone was there to celebrate Thomas's victory, but they gave Bertie a big welcome too. Well done, Thomas, said Bertie. That was fun. But to beat you over that hill, I should have to grow wings and be an aeroplane. They now keep each other very busy. They often talk about their race, but Bertie's passengers don't like being bounced like peas in a frying pan. And the fat controller has warned Thomas not to race at dangerous speeds. So although, between you and me, they would like to have another race, I don't think they ever will. Do you?
Henry and Gordon were lonely when Thomas left the yard to run his branch line. They missed him very much. They had more work to do and had to fetch their own coaches. They didn't like that. James grumbled too. We get no rest, we get no rest, they all complained. But the coaches only laughed. You're lazy and slack, you're lazy and slack, they answered. Altogether, the engines were causing the fat controller a great deal of trouble. The big stations at both ends of the line each have a turntable. The fat controller had made them so that the tender engines can be turned round because it is dangerous for them to go fast backwards. Tank engines like Thomas don't need turntables. They can go just as well backwards as forwards. But to hear Gordon talk, you would have thought that the fat controller had given him a tender just to show how important he was. You don't understand, little Thomas. We tender engines have a position to keep up. It doesn't matter where you go, but we are important. And for the fat controller to make us shunt trucks, fetch coaches and go on some of those dirty sidings, it's, it's, well, it's not the proper thing. Thomas chuckled and went off with Annie and Clarabel. Disgraceful, Gordon hissed as he ran backwards to the turntable. The turntable was in a windy place close to the sea, and if he was not on it just right, he put it out of balance and made it difficult to turn. Today, Gordon was in a bad temper, and the wind was blowing fiercely. His driver tried to make him stop in the right place, but Gordon wasn't trying. The fireman tried to turn the handle, but Gordon's weight and the strong wind prevented him. It's no good, they said at last. Your tender upsets the balance. If you were a nice tank engine, you'd be all right. Now you'll have to pull the next train backwards. Look, call some boys. There's a new tank engine. Oh, it's only Gordon back to front. Hello, call Thomas. Playing tank engines? Sensible engine. Take my advice, scrap your tender and have a nice bunker. Gordon said nothing. Even James laughed when he saw him. Take care, hissed Gordon, you might stick too. No fear, chuckled James, I'm not so fat as you. I mustn't stick, thought James. He stopped on just the right place to balance the table. It could now swing easily. Gordon arrived in time to see everything. James turned much too easily. The wind puffed him round like a top. He couldn't stop. Well, well, said Gordon, are you playing roundabouts? Poor James, feeling quite giddy, rolled off to the shed without a word. That night, the three engines had an indignation meeting. It's shameful to treat tender engines like this. Gordon has to go backwards and people think he's a tank engine. James spins round like a top and everyone laughs at us. And to add to that, the fat controller makes us all shunt in dirty sidings. Blech. Listen, said Gordon. He whispered something to the others. We'll do it tomorrow. The fat controller will look silly. The engines had decided to go on strike.
fat controller sat in his office listening to the noise outside. The passengers were angry. The station master came in. There's trouble in the shed, sir. Henry is sulking, there's no train, and the passengers are saying this is a bad railway. Indeed, said the fat controller, we cannot allow that. He found Gordon, James and Henry looking very cross. Come along, Henry, it's time your train was ready. Henry's not going, said Gordon. We won't shunt like common tank engines. That was Thomas's job. We are important tender engines. You fetch our coaches and we will pull them. Tender engines don't shunt. Oh, indeed, said the fat controller. We'll see about that. Engines on my railway do as they are told. And he hurried away to find Edward. The yard has never been the same since Thomas left to run his branch line, he thought sadly. Edward was shunting. Leave those trucks, please, Edward, said the fat controller. I want you to push coaches for me in the yard. Thank you, sir. That will be a nice change. That's a good engine. Off you go, then. So Edward found coaches for the three engines, and that day the trains ran as usual. Next morning, Edward looked unhappy. Gordon came clanking past, hissing rudely. Bless me, said the fat controller. What a noise. They all hiss me, sir, answered Edward. They say tender engines don't shunt, and last night they said I have black wheels. I haven't, have I, sir? No, Edward, you have nice blue ones, and I'm proud of you. Tender engines do shunt. But all the same, we do need another tank engine here. He went to a workshop and they showed him all sorts of engines. At last he saw a smart little green engine with four wheels. That's the one, he thought. If I choose you, will you work hard? Oh, sir, yes, sir. That's a good engine. I'll call you Percy. Yes, sir, thank you, sir, said Percy. And the fat controller brought him back to the yard. Edward? He called, here's Percy, will you show him everything? Percy soon learned what he had to do, and they had a happy afternoon. Then Henry came by, hissing as usual. Chee! When Percy, Henry jumped and ran back to the shed. How beautifully you weeshed him, laughed Edward. I can't weesh like that. Oh, said Percy, that's nothing. You should hear them in the workshop. You have to weesh loudly to make yourself heard. Next morning, Thomas arrived. The fat controller sent for me. I expect he wants help, he said to Edward. Shh, here he comes, replied Edward. Well done, Thomas. You've been quick. Listen. Henry Gordon and James are sulking. They say they won't shunt like common tank engines. So I have shut them up and I want you both to run the line for a while. Common tank engines indeed, snorted Thomas. We'll show them. And Percy will help too. Oh, sir, yes, sir, please, sir, answered Percy. Edward and Thomas worked the main line, greeting each other as they passed by. Percy puffed along the branch line. Thomas was anxious about Annie and Claribel, but both driver and guard promised to take care of them. There were fewer trains, but the passengers didn't mind. They knew the three other engines were having a lesson. Gordon, James and Henry were cold, lonely and miserable. They wished now they hadn't been so silly.
Henry, James, and Gordon were miserable. They had been shut up for several days for being naughty and longed to be let out again. At last, the fat controller arrived. I hope you are sorry, he said, and understand that you are not so important after all. We have a new tank engine called Percy who helps pull coaches, and Thomas and Edward have worked the main line nicely. But I will let you out now if you promise to be good. Yes, sir, said the three engines, we will. That's right, but please remember that this no shunting nonsense must stop. He then told Percy, Edward and Thomas that they could go and play on the branch line for a few days. And they ran off happily to find Annie and Clarabel at the junction. The two coaches were so pleased to see Thomas again. Edward and Percy played with trucks. Stop, 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 screamed the trucks as they were pushed into their proper sidings. But the two engines laughed and went on shunting till the trucks were tidily arranged. Next, Edward took some empty trucks to the quarry. Percy was left alone. He didn't mind that a bit. He liked watching trains and being cheeky to the other engines. Hurry, 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 he would call, and they got very cross. After a great deal of shunting, Percy was waiting for the signalman to set the point so that he could get back to the yard. He was eager to work, but was being rather careless and not paying attention. Edward had warned Percy, be careful on the main line, whistle to the signalman, you are there. But Percy didn't remember to whistle, so the busy signalman forgot him. Percy waited and waited. The points were still against him, so he couldn't move. Then he looked along the main line. Peep, peep! He whistled in horror, for rushing straight towards him was Gordon with the express. Gordon, get out of my way! Percy opened his eyes. Gordon had stopped with Percy's buffers a few inches from his own. But Percy had begun to move. I won't stay here. I'll run away, he puffed. He went straight through Edward's station and was so frightened that he ran right up Gordon's hill without stopping. After that, he was tired, but he couldn't stop. He had no driver to shut off steam and apply the brakes. I want to stop, I want to stop, he puffed. The man in the signal box saw Percy was in trouble, so kindly set the points. Percy puffed wearily onto a nice empty siding, ending in a big bank of earth. He was too tired now to care where he went. I want to stop. I want to stop. I have stopped, he puffed thankfully. Never mind, Percy, said the workman as they dug him out. You shall have a drink and some coal, and then you'll feel better. Presently, Gordon arrived. Well done, Percy. You started so quickly that you stopped a nasty accident. I'm sorry I was cheeky, said Percy. You were clever to stop. Then Gordon helped pull Percy out from the bank. Percy is still cheeky because he is that sort of engine, but he is always most careful when he goes on the main line.